It's crazy to think that even though MLB opening day was only 19 days ago, we're already 25% of the way through the season. Obviously, the pandemic has made things weird, especially when you consider the fact that some games are being postponed, each team only has nine regular season opponents, and some players have opted out of the season entirely. But even in the midst of these unusual circumstances, I can confidently say that I've never been more excited to watch regular season baseball on TV, and I know I'm not the only one who feels that way too. I'm really digging the fact that this 60-game pandemic schedule makes games 2.7 times as important as they'd be in a normal 162 game season. And it makes me think that if I could have things my way, I'd never go back to 162 games even when things get back to normal. Now I'm not saying a 60 game sprint is the move going forward, because accurately evaluating who the best teams in baseball are still requires a marathon. But I think if you can get past the idea of record books looking different, a shortened season would make for a lot better TV. I just know that it's not a realistic thing to ask for owners to sign up for a shortened season because the sheer volume of a 162 game season allows them to maximize in-person revenue by ticket sales, concessions, and then cashing in on these expensive local TV rights. This is how MLB continues to develop a passionate local fandom. That's its strength, but we know the weakness is that the game can grow more nationally. So how can that be done? How can MLB become a larger part of the daily nationwide sports conversation? Well, I'd say that requires increasing player visibility and creating more marquee matchups. Two areas where, you know, if you can look at the NBA, MLB can do what the NBA does. Not the same way, but they can get some help. Just like the NBA, MLB, it's 30 teams split into two groups of 15. The only difference being that the NBA doesn't let conference alignment stop teams from playing each other, whereas MLB does. The Los Angeles Lakers and the Boston Celtics play twice a year in an 82-game NBA season. So tell me this, in a 162-game MLB season, why can't the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Boston Red Sox play at least twice a year? It's foolish to have a 162-game season if... All 30 teams don't play each other. I'm a huge baseball fan, but most baseball fans are fans of a team first. And even if you're a diehard Dodger fan like me, MLB's current scheduling format doesn't do much to help you learn about players on all 30 ball clubs. I know significantly less than I probably should about the American League, and I'd say a lot of it is because the 20 interleague games my Dodgers get to play are against our nearby rival Angels and a rotating basis of five other American League teams. But if it counts for anything, I can tell you a whole lot about the Padres, Giants, Rockies, and Diamondbacks because, well, we have to play them 19 times each. I mean, come on, do we really need 19 games to determine who the better divisional team is? I think it makes more sense to just cut it down to 16 games against teams in your own division. Eight at home, eight on the road, And that takes you from 76 to 64 division games. And then as for the remaining 10 teams in your league, I think each team should get three home and three road games against them, which puts you down to then 60 total non-division games. And that frees up 18 games to take us from 142 to 124 league games. And instead of having a 20-game interleague schedule on a three-year rotation between divisions, I'm proposing that MLB adds 18 more interleague games. Simply put, expanding interleague to 38 games makes things a lot more interesting. As it is, each MLB team has a designated quote-unquote natural rival based on their proximity. Obviously the Dodgers and the Angels, the Yankees and the Mets, the Cubs and the White Sox, the Giants and the A's, and then some that aren't as natural of rivals, but the list goes on. And when you expand interleague play from 20 to 38, it allows these interleague rivals to get an additional game against each other. So now you're looking at five games between nearby rivals. But that's not even the best part about my proposal, I think. This would still leave each club with 33 games that can be used for either a two or three game series against the remaining 14 teams in the opposite league. I mean, this feels like a no brainer. It makes total and complete sense if you ask me. And if MLB continues to move towards permanently implementing a universal DH in both the NL and AL, it doesn't make much sense anymore to keep the league so segregated. And I'll say this too, 
There's a reason the average LA sports fan knows a lot more about the Detroit Lions and Detroit Pistons than they do about the Detroit Tigers, and it has everything to do with visibility and national popularity. Playoff baseball does really well on TV because, well, the games, they mean a lot more. But there are plenty of baseball fans who put a lot of energy into those 162 regular season games. And when their team is eliminated, though, it's a lot easier for them to lose interest in the outcome of a playoff series between two teams that they've rarely seen play and with players whose names they barely recognize. There's so many talented baseball players trapped in these small markets that deserve better than being limited to just local market notoriety. Putting stars in front of all 30 ball clubs only increases their national marketability. And if baseball allows every team to play each other, you're guaranteeing your fans the chance at more marquee matchups and World Series previews. Like take, for instance, the Dodgers and the Yankees, who are the two most valuable franchises in baseball. These two clubs have shaped themselves as World Series contenders for the foreseeable future. I think it's ass backwards that antiquated rules force them to wait every other three years at hosting a four-game series. Especially since there's no guaranteeing that they're going to even meet in the World Series to begin with, because as we know, baseball playoffs are about who gets hot in October. The Dodgers and Yankees, they should be playing at least two games against each other on national TV every single year. But nope. Baseball doesn't get it. Baseball, they've got a tradition problem. Purists don't want anything to change. I love baseball, but for the sake of the sport's health and well-being, these purists need to be a lot more accepting of minor changes. Like, for instance, I used to be against the idea of a universal DH because it took away from the element of strategy from National League managers, but that's until I realized how infuriating it is to watch your manager take it out of all the players' hands and blow the game with bad substitutions. I'm talking about you, Dave Roberts. Love you, but sometimes you screw up. And in those cool moments with two outs and bases loaded, don't tell me you like watching a pitcher strike out on three straight fastballs. It's way more exciting with a DH. And I don't care if you call me crazy, but I actually also like this new rule that puts an automatic runner on second base in extra innings. It might be bizarre, but again, don't pretend that it's worse than seeing an exhausted bullpen go into the 17th inning and saying, hey, second baseman, can you come in on the mound? Throw some BP in this low-scoring 1-1 game? Come on, man, that's not, that's not great. That's not great at all. Baseball is a beautiful game, but don't tell me it's just perfect and that everything's fine because it's been America's pastime for years. I'm not saying that the sport is dying. That's not what I'm saying at all. Because even though people have been prophesizing a slow and imminent death to America's pastimes, like boxing, horse racing, and baseball for years, we all know they'll never go away. But when you keep looking back on your decorated history to find tomorrow's answers, don't be surprised if you lose a little bit of national relevancy. Creating new household names, it starts with maintaining the health of your sport, and you gotta do that. You can't just fall back on the past. Playing 124 games against teams in your own league is still 76% of your schedule, and that's more than enough to maintain a legitimate pennant race. And my suggestion to expand interleague play by 18 games gives MLB this opportunity to boost nationwide marketability of its young stars, which is something that we definitely know it needs help with. So for the baseball purists who are infatuated with preserving tradition, keep safeguarding the sport, and pretty soon you're going to have very few people to enjoy it with. And none of us want to see that.